This video is brought to you by Gamersubs. Use code MHB at checkout for 10% off your next order. When I think of the PS2, one of the first series I think of is easily Jack and Daxter. It's a series that I easily spent some of the most time with on the console and loved each and every game, which is huge because this series never seemed to stay the same from game to game. I mean, Jack 1 is a light-hearted collect-a-thon platformer, and then Jack 2 is an edgy third-person shooter with platforming, and then Jack X is a combat racer. It's a wild series, but I love it. Unfortunately, I've already gotten the Platinum Trophy in the Jack Trilogy, so unless I can find a copy of the collection on PS3 for a decent price, we won't be covering those games for a while. So when I saw in this month's PS Plus games that Jack and Daxter The Lost Frontier was making its way to PS5, I was stoked. This was finally going to give me an excuse to talk about Jack and Daxter on the channel. I loved this game on the PSP back when I was 12, the perfect age for top tier opinions, and it's a game that most people, even fans like myself, tend to forget about. Oh, and it's the last piece of Jack and Daxter content we ever got outside of cameos. Wild to think it's been 50 15 years since the last Jack and Daxter game. We're getting old, man. As always, if you do end up enjoying the content, be sure to like the video. If this video gets 1500 likes, I'll platinum Jack X. Comment below some more platinums you'd like to see me tackle next. Subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. And go over to twitch.tv slash mayorhairbear if you want to see some of these platinum journeys live. Now, being a new release, there was no guide or trophy list rating, if you will, about The Lost Frontier. So again, this was going to be a play the game and figure it out type of journey. However, going off my very, very foggy memory from 2009 and looking at the trophy list for the game, I figured we'd be in for a pretty simple platinum experience. I mean, it's not a long game to begin with and most of the other PSP games re-released with trophy support have been pretty straightforward, play the game type of platinums. So I booted up the Lost Frontier, and got to work. Oh, and yes, I'll be spoiling the game in this video, and for this Platinum, from what I can gather, there is no playing after the credits, so this is a Platinum by the end of the game type of experience. The game begins at, well, some point after Jack 3. We don't really get a time frame, but Jack and Daxter are escorting Kira on her mission to become a sage and figure out the cause for the world's eco shortage. As we're cruising the skies, we're attacked by sky pirates, led by Captain Phoenix, who forced Jack to crash land on the edge of the world. So we need to find some eco to repair our ship, which is where we grab our first two trophies for grabbing our first precursor orb. Spare an orb in these troubled times. First trophy, we're locked in. <laughs> and find the green eco to fix up our ship. Eco battery. We try to get the hell out of Dodge, but we decide to help out a warship under attack by those pesky sky pirates, which is where we meet Duke Skyheat. While exploring the warship and gathering some more precursor orbs, we stop by Kira to learn our first eco skill. Sage's Apprentice. We meet back up with the Duke and Jack is given an instrument called the Eco Seeker, which should take us to what is called an Eco Core. Jack tries to power it up with his dark Eco self, but can't as it's too unstable and prevents him from turning into Dark Jack. But even though Jack can't seem to get it up, which I hear happens to a lot of guys, not that I'd know, Kira is granted permission to study the core if Jack shows off his fighting skills in the city's shooting range. At the range we grab our first gun, the blaster, can't beat a classic. And because we're god gamers, we managed to get 10,000 points on the course first try. After we get used to the aiming, because this was designed around one analog stick, so it's not the best run and gun shooter I've ever played, to put it mildly. Yeah, buddy, Jack Dangerous. Boom. Once we're done with the course, we're heading back to the Duke when Daxter falls into the sewers and discovers that there is Dark Eco in the city. He ends up being doused in some more Dark Eco, which transforms him temporarily into Dark Daxter, which basically acts as a top-down Hulk moment. And I'm not mad at it. Plus, if you spin around punching the crap out of the elevator, it drops a precursor orb, which is pretty cool. Anyway, we make it back to the Duke when Captain Phoenix and the Sky Pirates attack, stealing the Eco Seeker and Kira. Well, not really stealing Kira, she tried to do something and just utterly failed. So we head to the Hellcat and chase down Phoenix, making sure to yeet Daxter at his ship to steal some sweet plane upgrades. 
you won't be needing it anyway. Only to be led into a trap and crash landing back on the island again. On the island we grab the shotgun, Hey, scattered and tattered. And get our first proper taste at some classic Jack style gameplay, which is good fun. Here the duo meet a castaway who knows that Jack has been touched by Dark Eco, but can't remember who he was or why he was on the island. He does know that he built a few killer robots though and offers to fix Jack's ship if he can take out the Uberbot 888. So out we go to do just that, which with our eco powers and shotgun is no problem at all. Plus some rewinding because I mean, why wouldn't we? Uber Scrap. Once Jack and Daxter get the parts from Uberbot, the castaway fixes their ship, we take off and manage to disable Phoenix's ship and land. Which, just back to the ship combat, because this is exclusive to this entry in the series, it's a solid addition. Ship controls well, the customization is solid, and it's a good challenge at times. On board Phoenix's ship, first things first, we smack the crap out of 10 barrels because, well honestly I don't know why this is a trophy, but hey, we did it nonetheless. Barrel Frustration and head to the bridge. Jack and Phoenix start beefing and the Eco Seeker gets smacked overboard. But before we return to the island, we make sure to smack Phoenix for being a prick. Painful truce. And upgrade our first plane part with our scrap we gathered from smoking those sky pirates. Ship mechanic. Now it's here we finally get a bit more freedom and can explore the area in our plane a bit more. So I decided to focus on completing all of Dirk Hardpecks races, which are pretty simple. You just fly around following a ship deploying targets and the one with the most by the end wins the race. And doing all of these unlocks us quite a few trophies, such as for winning a race, hard to beat, scoring 50, 100 and 200 points in a race, there we go, target acquired, leader of the pack, yes! No need to show off. And I know it seems soon, but I swear they're absolutely everywhere in this game. Grabs my 50th Precursor Orb. Make me a Precursor Omelette. That's for 50. I just need 100, I think, for this game when you're done with the Precursor Orbs, which is pretty cool. But I wasn't done goofing off just yet, as I wanted to get my scrap up a bit to grab some more upgrades, eventually gunning down my 100th ship. Join the Scrap Heap. And while I was doing that, I was completing the idle challenge on the island, which was to destroy so many crystals and before time runs out, return the energy. There's definitely some crystals tucked away, but for the most part, this is pretty simple. Just make sure you level up your speed mods for your plane first. There we go, saving the brink. But finally back to the island once more to retrieve the core from a damn volcano, racing Phoenix up to grab it and head back to the ship where of course Jack and the Sky Pirates butt heads until Kira intervenes and we call a truce, which is where we grab a nice submachine gun for our next weapon. Blue Rapid Beauty. We need some supplies before we can head off to continue our mission, which takes us to Far Drop. And again, we have to procrastinate first. First returning all the eco to the idol, Saving the settlement, and then completing all of the pirate radio missions, which, you guessed it, has us completing some pirate activities. Mainly just shooting down aircrafts. Yes, radio to defeat. We dock in Far Drop where they have a bit of a mutant problem, so in exchange for some supplies, we agree to take out some mutants. While making sure to check corners, we find our 100th Precursor Orb, and that's those collectibles done for the game, which if you completed any of the other games, is a low count to obtain the trophy. But hey, one less thing to worry about. King Orb of the Lost Frontier. So that's all the precursor orbs we need for this game, which is pretty easy. Our mutant hunt leads us to the Alpha, who, not going to lie, is a tough cookie, but we eventually take him out and grab our reward. Going ape in the dark. A pub in town is now open though for our next side objective barter challenges. These confuse me initially, but it's just about repairing the bar before more things get busted up. And once we complete four of these challenges, grab our next trophy. Ruffin Tuffin Jack. As we make our way back to our ship, also donating some scrap to help rebuild the town. Generosity of a hero. And head back to Phoenix's ship where we use some more scrap for three trophies. At this point I was loaded with scrap, so I managed to upgrade a plane weapon or mod to level 5. Ship Scrapper. Purchased a plane weapon or mod. Scrap Shopper. And purchased basically everything in the shop. 
parts for every occasion as well done so you just buy everything <laughs> back to the story though and the eco seeker needs more light eco to work and so we travel to an old research rig used by the aeropens of course being a new location we make sure to grab all the energy for the idol before going to our objective saving the ruins at the rig, Jack comes across a testing table, giving him flashbacks to his time with the same device during his time in the Baron's prison. Realizing that someone has been experimenting with Dark Eco, vowing to stop those responsible. Oh, and we get some more time with Dark Daxter. After the light Eco is inserted into the Seeker, we learn that we're missing three parts to get this thing up and running. Grabbing our final weapon, the Lobber, Got the old potato shooter. And making our first stop to travel back to Far Drop to get one piece from a pirate. This is a melee only fight and she is quick as anything, but with some nifty maneuvering, and of course, rewind, we do grab the piece and our next destination is the old Aeropen Barracks. Again, a new place means we gotta help out the idol before we head to our true destination. Saving the land, too easy guys. Too easy. As we head through the barracks, we gotta make sure we jump on one of the beds. One little Jack jumping on the bed. And it's here the castaway reveals that he is, or was, a dark eco sage, and that he built the facility for the Aeropens. While we're divulging secrets, Phoenix also reveals that he was once the commander of the Aeropen Air Forces, and was put in charge of a secret weapons program to make a new kind of warrior. When he discovered what they were doing, he refused and tried to stop the program, but Skyheed, the Duke from a while ago, wouldn't hear of it. So he went pirate, left and kidnapped the program's chief scientist, who is, dun dun dun, the castaway. I know, it shocked me too. In the escape, the castaway took a blow to his head and suffered amnesia, being left on Brink Island in an attempt to hide his work. Phoenix, still devolving by the way, bit of an exposition dump, further explains that Skyheed spread the dark power to all the Europans, marked him an outlaw, and he vowed to destroy all dark warriors, including Jack. Kira obviously refutes Phoenix, saying that Jack isn't a monster, even though Phoenix had seen Dark Jack. Kira ultimately gives Phoenix an ultimatum to spare Jack if he cared for her at all. I know, little love triangle here now too. The castaway says that Jack can be used to undo the damage that the Europans had done, being a warrior who proves that Dark Eco can be controlled or at least managed. So now that everyone's life stories are out in the open, we all agree to take on the Europans. We head back to the ship, grab some more eco upgrades from Kira, which is where we manage to unlock all eco skills for any color. Sage in training, and head to the point before the point of no return. We travel to Sector Zero, a mysterious location beyond the edge of the world. Again, grab that idol's eco back for him to be a good bloke. Saving the chaos. That's the last of the uh, planets and energy stuff, so pretty much just playing the game from here on. And also making sure before we do anything else to grind our scrap up to at least 15,000, as we'll need that post the point of no return. Jack and Daxa grab the third sphere, but are soon after attacked by the behemoth, and we need to defend ourselves. Which is probably one of the toughest and longest battles in the game. That's pretty satisfying, I can't lie. Back on board, Jack, Daxta, Kira, Phoenix, and the crew fix the Eco Seeker, which points back to the abandoned research rig. Phoenix recalls that the rig was built over strange formations, later revealed to be an ancient precursor facility. Before we get off the ship though, this is why we needed to save up our scrap, because after Sector Zero, we can't go back and forth anymore between locations. Here, one of the Sky Pirates lets us buy the gunship for 15,000 scrap. Buy it, thank you. That's a steal. And once we take flight on it, also pops another trophy as throughout the game we've flown in all five ships available. Just make sure if you see a new ship to fly it and you're good. Flying enthusiast, there we go, that's for flying uh, all five of the planes, yeah. So that just leaves us with the story stuff, I'm pretty sure. 
But with all the missable side objectives and miscellaneous trophies out the way, all that's left is to finish the story and that platinum is all ours. When we reach the Echo Court, Kira tries to fix it. Shortly after, Phoenix's right hand man Clout arrives with the Duke and reveals he was paid off by Skyheed in exchange for the location of the core. Backstabbing bastard that totally isn't obvious from the beginning. Anyway, the Duke orders everyone killed except Jack because he wants to study his control over Dark Eco. However, Kira activates the Eco Core and the radiation kills Cloud and stuns the Duke while everyone can escape. We get word that the Europans have laid siege to Fardrop, so back we go once more to help. Jack and Daxter successfully force the Europans to retreat, but Phoenix wants revenge on the Duke for the attack. We head through a warp gate while Dark Daxter holds off the Europan soldiers before catching up with everyone on the other side. In Europa, we head up to the palace to defeat the Duke, but quickly learn he's been absorbing massive amounts of Dark Eco, which transform him into a giant Dark Eco monster. The Duke's right-hand man shows up and reveals he helped us get here as he felt what Skyheed had done to his own people was wrong, which causes the Duke to take him out. Jack battles the Duke, but the bullet sponge ends up escaping before we can take him out on an airship back to the behemoth to try and use the eco core to ensure his dominance of the world. Duke of Elves. But not a problem, as we disable the shields for the behemoth, letting us take out the weapon systems and eco crystals. Phoenix then flies the phantom blade between the eco core and behemoth to prevent them from draining the core, sacrificing himself in the process and cutting off the eco flow, which leaves the behemoth vulnerable to attack. And it doesn't take much to take it out once and for all. With Europa finally defeated, the balance of eco is restored. Kira then activates the eco core which disperses all the eco back into the world. Kira realizes she is now able to channel eco and the castaway letting her know that she may be turning into a sage. And with the promise of another adventure that never was, that's our platinum trophy and the lost frontier complete. That should be it now. There we go, for those we've lost. And that's, that's Jack and Daxter the lost frontier done. Frontier found. Probably wasn't as good as I remember, but it wasn't that wasn't a bad that wasn't a bad game at all. So after seven hours in total, I told you, it's a PSP game, they're not the longest platinums ever. <laughs> what did I think of Jack and Daxter, The Lost Frontier's Platinum, and the game in general? First things first, The Lost Frontier I thought was a fine game. It wasn't as good as I remember, and I definitely think it's the weakest of the series, but I enjoyed my time revisiting the game for sure. The controls are a bit funky, but for a portable title, I think this is pretty good. The story gets the job done, the combat and platforming feels mostly like the PS2 games, and the ship combat is a lot of fun. I don't love that this is the last entry we've gotten in the series though. I need one more mainline title. But if you've never played this one and are a fan of the series, I'd say it's worth sussing out. In terms of the Platinum Trophy, this is pretty straightforward as long as you pay attention to the trophy list as you play. In each world, make sure you complete your side objectives, keep an eye out for a couple of location specific trophies, and save up your money before it's too late and you'll get this by the time the credits roll, no issue. Is it my favorite Platinum in my collection? Definitely not. A little too simplistic for me, but hey, with this one done, that just leaves Jack X to go and the series is completely platinumed, which is pretty cool. But now I just need Sony to give me Daxter on PS5. Thank you all so much for watching. If you made it this far in the video, make sure to leave a comment with I want Jack 4 to let me know that you made it to the end. Make sure if you did enjoy the video to leave it a like because it helps let me know that you enjoyed yourself. Comment below some more games you want to see get platinum next, as well as your personal favorite Jack and Daxter game and platinum trophy. Thank you to all my channel members for that extra level of support, and special thanks to those in the Bear Club, GNT Puppy, Jackie White, Nugget, Dark Wolf, Daniel Fitzgerald, Scott Unwin, Steel Vanguard, NPO Crusader, Zafado, Nef Nef, and Marcel. It really does mean a lot to me. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. Go give my socials a follow if you fancy at Mare Hair Bear. Join the Discord server to have a chat. Go and chuck me a follow on Twitch if you want to see some of these Platinum Journeys live. Or Mare Hair Bear VODs if those pesky time zones don't line up for you. And I'll catch you all in the next video.